All right, time to go into Cap's Corner, brought to you by Great Clips. We welcome in my friend, my partner on the football after show. He and I do shows during the week together. He is former Bears and Dolphins coach Dave Wanstead. All right, coach, let's talk about yesterday, 31-10. They were really never in the game, and they got a lot of injuries. Eddie Jackson were waiting word, but Matt Eberflew said, we don't know if it's season ending. That doesn't sound good. Darnell Mooney, they announced it is season ending. I'm hearing Borum has a high ankle. Riley Reef has a shoulder. So do you play Justin Fields on Sunday if he says he wants to go? No, I don't think Justin Fields is going to be ready, number one. Uh, he would have to go out there and be 100% cap, which I would be shocked if he is. I mean, any type of – and there's about four different types of shoulder separations, different degrees, how wide the shoulder is actually separated. And the minimum is a two-week deal. And particularly for somebody that's going to be running like him, uh, they can pad that up all they want. But, you know, between throwing the football and quarterback runs, if he can't do that, then it would be unfair to have Justin in the game. If you put him in the game and said, we're not, you can't scramble, You're, we're not going to call any plays where you run, just have fun dropping back. I mean, that's that's not going to work. So I think he rests again this week. Then they got the bye next week. And, and bring him back and see if he can finish strong at the end. So when you look at yesterday's game, what is your biggest takeaway? Because Trevor Simeon, you know, he, he tries hard. He's not an A-level number one starter. But we were looking, you and I were watching with A.B. and with Lance, He's got receivers that got no separation. Even when he gets a clean pocket, he's looking around like, who am I supposed to throw this ball to? So what are we doing here for the rest of the season? Yeah, well, it was a, a little bit different offense. We talked about that yesterday, Cap. You know, when you go from a, 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 a rollout offense, run and pass, to a drop back scheme, it's different. You know, so now you're, you are adjusting your routes. I mean, different than you would uh otherwise so there was a little bit of a learning curve and now you've got a new quarterback in there uh the offensive line the protections when you're rolling out they're kind of zone stepping it's completely different than when you're dropping back and throwing the ball so it was a tough game and then we're they're playing against one of the best defenses in the nfl you know we those guys were top five in sacks so we knew that that we were going to be under a lot of pressure it, it was just, and, and then the weather conditions, it's raining on top of it. So it's terrible conditions for throwing the ball. So I don't think that was a real fair evaluation. I do think that Trevor Simeon will be better this week. Uh, the competition's not going to be a whole lot different. I mean, we'll see if Green Bay shows up, but they have just as much talent as the Jets do on defense. So let's talk also about, what we do defensively, because Eddie Jackson, I, I don't see any way he plays. Uh, you had Brisker and Gordon in concussion protocol. They haven't been cleared yet. I don't know if they're going to play. So what are you trying to get out of your defense? You still have to play five more football games. Yeah, that, that's, the, you know, the, the team really, and, you know, we – we had one turnover. We only had, what, one or two penalties. I mean, we did not play a sloppy football game. We just played a football game where we weren't good enough. And and I always looked at it this way, Cap. If guys, and I should have said this last night. I'm glad we're talking now. You know, when I would be a head coach, and if I had guys running clean free, okay, on defense, I'm calling my defensive coordinator, and, and I say, we got a problem. This scheme, either it's too complicated that the players don't understand it or it's not worth a damn, okay? But it's a scheme. If we've got players in position and the other team's making the play, I would tell my coaches, keep doing what you're doing. Keep coaching it. I got to get better players. We don't have good enough talent. And that's what I see with the Bears. We're handing the ball off and they're running, making some yards on the run and pass. It's not because they're tricking us. They're, they're really not. I mean, you know, their guys are, are just making more plays than we are. Now, with the injuries, to get back to the original point, you do, you're going to have to keep it simple. The worst thing that, that Matt Eberflus could do is come in with new guys that aren't as talented and aren't as experienced 
and start adding a bunch of new things. Now you're going to get those guys running free and you're going to give up some real easy scores. So do what you've been practicing all along. Do what the guys know how to do. And just they just got to give a fanatical effort. We're at home playing the Packers. You got to put a little bit of stock that that may that that may carry some weight in this game. All right, so you're the perfect guy to ask this question to. When you were working with Jimmy Johnson down in Dallas, and it's a full-scale rebuild, Jerry buys the team, he plucks yep. Jimmy, and there you are. You guys, because you were recruiting at the college level on all the best guys at Miami, you knew who the best players were in the draft. Did you have an advantage over a GM or an NFL personnel staff that wasn't as intimately involved in recruiting so that when you went into the draft, you knew exactly who you needed to take? I, I think there was an advantage, absolutely, for those first couple of years because a lot of the kids that were coming out of Florida and Texas and on and on, I mean, we sat in their homes. You know, we recruited these kids out of high school, so we knew – not anybody can watch the film and say the guy can run fast. He's got great hands. He's uh, he can rush the passer. But I think the advantage that we had on some of those kids was some of those players was that we had we knew the intangibles cap. You know what I mean? We we knew what the guy's work that work ethic was. We we knew what his background was. We knew what his character was. And and I think that that I know that was an advantage for sure. At least the first couple of years. So. As you look at this football team, left tackle, obviously, you have to address. Wide receiver, you have to address. Is it more important if there's two evenly matched guys on the board and you go, I need a three technique that can stop the, the run, or I need a guy that can put the quarterback on his backside? Which is more important? Wow. That, that's a tough one. Um... You know, if you don't stop the run, you're not going to win any games. We know that. Uh, but you can generally – I would take the pass rusher because, you know, you, they, they don't uh, – you can't invent those guys, okay? Guys either have that type of God-given ability or not. And pass rushers, I put in the category of closers. Quarterbacks are closers. Cor defensive corners are closers. And pass rushers are closers. We got a lead in the game. We got to get pressure on the quarterback or get him on the ground. You got to have a pass rusher to do that. So I would check the box and say, I'm taking the pass rusher first. Okay. And if you're drafting offense, are you taking a left tackle first? Are you taking a center who anchors your offensive line? If he's truly that good, are you taking a wide receiver? You know what? The talk used to be. Uh, take those tackles because they're going to protect the backside and, and, the, and the money they were getting paid more money on. Now, you know what? You'd like to have a tackle. I would say this to my scouts. You know what? If there's a tackle out there, we're taking a tackle because they get out on idle a little bit more. But I'll tell you what, if there's a first round offensive center and there's a third round offensive tackle, I'm taking the first round center. Coach, have a great rest of your night. Tell Jan I said hey, and I'll see you Thursday here in the studio. I can't wait, Cap. You're the man.